Welcome everyone to the second of our annual international webinar series. We're so excited to have you here tonight. We're so excited to be talking with Mark Brew. Um, before we get started, just a little bit of housekeeping and introductions. Um, so I'm Izzy Robinson. Uh, I'm the creative producer here at Touch Compass. My pronouns are they, them, and quick audio description. I have long brown curly hair, which is tied up in a bun, so you can't see it. I'm wearing big black headphones. I'm a Pakiha uh, person, black t-shirt, and there's a Touch Compass logo uh, to my left and a white background. So for tonight's webinar, um, we're pretty relaxed. So if anyone needs to come and go during the webinar, please feel free. Uh, what we do ask is uh, please keep your um, uh, microphones muted. If you'd like to have your camera on, you can. However, if you don't want it on, that is no problem at all. If you're looking at your screen and you're just seeing a bunch of uh, blank images because uh, everyone's got their cameras off, if you click in the top corner where the three dots are and you can select hide non-video participants, that might make it a, a little more pleasant. Um, throughout tonight's webinar, we will be spotlighting those who are talking, so they should pop up as the main image on your screen. Uh, in terms of access, we have NZSL Interpretation tonight, provided by Platform Interpreting, uh, who, will be who will be with us for the entire webinar. And if there are any problems whatsoever that you have with the Zoom, please feel free to send me a message, either to myself or to Zan. Um, we'll be managing the back end of the Zoom and also of the Facebook Live uh, recording where this is going out to as well. Um, so yes, if anything goes wrong, please, please message us and we'll get to it as soon as we can. Uh, in terms of anything else, just sit back, relax and enjoy the corridor. Um, Tonight, as I said, we've got Mark Brew to, in conversation with Touch Compass's Artistic Direction panel. Uh, and to kick off the evening, I'd like to invite our general manager, John, to start us with a karakia. Uh, kia ora tato, uh, kafakare matoa, John Tang here, Kimi Zaho. Um, welcome to this. I will keep this very, very short. It's an absolute pleasure to have the living legend Mark Brew joining this, uh, our wonderful panel, our own living legends um, of uh, Suzanne, Lucy and Rodney. Uh, look, I'll keep this really short because I think there's going to be some great kōrero and we all want to hear it. So to open our, our hui, a traditional Māori incantation, prayer or karakia, as we say in Te Reo Māori, Māori language, uh, Unihia te pō, te pō whiri marama, tomukia te ao, te ao whatu tangata, tātai ki runga, tātai ki raro, tātai ahaurau, haumie, huie, tai kie. A uh, very quick translation, from confusion and darkness comes the light of understanding. From our understanding of the world comes unity as people. Uh, we are interwoven with what is above, what is below, and what is around us and ties us together. We are interconnected, uh, allied, together as one. Kia ora tato, enjoy this kōrero. Great, and I'll invite Rodney to start us off with uh, introductions from the ADP. And... Uh, tēnei te mea atu ki a koutou, nau mai hara mai ki te tautou koe te kaupapa e tēnei pū, ki te uh, ahi ai ai ana, ki te uh, mahi ana, ki touch compass hoki ki tēnā mata, nō reira, nau mai hara mai, tēnā koutou katou. Nō reira, tēnei te mea atu ki a koe mā, ki te rangatira hoki o te toi, or how to put you as a, a, an artist of extraordinary like capabilities, my friend. I welcome you, ma. A kotoi ni tu waka o nati mano poto te iwi ko nati roro te apu. I descend from the tiny we waka. My primary tribe is nati mano poto. My sub tribe is nati roro. No reira. I am very honoured to be uh, sitting beside my sister, Suzanne Cohen and Lucy Faiva as part of the artistic direction panel. And at the end of the day, what would love to do? Tēnei te mea te kia koutou. Mm. 
No reda, you survive. That is Tamu. Greetings to you all. I am Lucy Favor. I'm a Samoan and European performer and an independent collaborator with cerebral palsy. I have different verbal abilities to assist me in speaking through the communication app on my iPad. I'm sitting in my power chair in my living room. I got my black hair up in a bun and I'm wearing a brown top. I've been working and performing in Aotearoa, New Zealand and over in Australia with Touch Compass for almost 26 years, but I've been involved with the arts industry since I was in my teens. And also I'm on the artistic direction panel with Suzanne Cowan and Rodney Bell over a year now. I had the privilege of working with other artists and choreographers in their work. And I'm excited to be able to make my own first massive inclusive theatre work premiering in 2024. It is all female storytelling with a different perspective on identity and family, culture and desires. So welcome Mark, Belofa. Thanks, Lucy. Um, kia ora, Mark. Welcome. Lovely to have you here. Lovely to see you. Thank you for getting up so early. Um, so I'm Suzanne, um, part of the Artistic Direction panel. Um, I'm sitting here on my uh, furry couch with my furry dog sitting next to me. <laughs> and, um, and I'm Pakiha, um, pale-skinned. I've got green eyes. I've got... Um, shoulder length, uh, sort of brownish hair, and I've actually got an Aboriginal uh, print behind me um, by an artist called Bandit Marika. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but something I got in Sydney years ago, which I really love. <laughs> um, and so excited to be here tonight. Um, so, uh, Mark, um, would you like to introduce yourself? Thank you, Susan. Yes. Hello, everybody. My name is Mark Brew. I use he, him pronouns. I'm calling in today from Scotland in the United Kingdom in my home, actually in my kitchen. Uh, I am a, a white male. I'm six foot two. I have a shaved head and a shaved cropped uh, beard. I'm wearing a black cap, a green woolly, a green woolly jumper, green and black, I'd say. And yeah, I'm a wheelchair user and I'm really happy to be here. So thank you for your invitation to the artistic panel and Touch Compass, always a, a really wonderful place in my heart of all the times I've had to, the opportunity of working with you all. So thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, just to kick it off, I was just wanting to, um, yeah, just to ask you, I mean, you've had such um, a wonderful established career as a, as a choreographer and not just obviously within disability arts, but internationally um, in the dance sector. And um, yeah, you've established um, an, an amazing profile. And my question is, how did you do it? What was, <laughs> what, what's been your, um, what's, been your um, successful strategy? Oh, you mean give all my secrets away? No, just joking. Um, what? Well, yeah, I mean it's a. It's been a long. It's been a long journey. Um, uh, a journey of lots of ups and downs, as as we do in the art in the art sector. Uh, as some of you may or may not know, I'm originally from Australia, so I began my training in Australia in a, a wee little village called Gerildery in country New South Wales. I was the only boy in the village that danced and um, I didn't really know what was possible uh, as a young lad dancing. But thankfully through my career, I've had some really great mentors, teachers, people who identified that there was talent uh, even way back then when I was six years old and I was very fortunate and honoured that I was able to go to some dance schools so I auditioned for one in Melbourne and one in Sydney and then went to the Victorian College of the Arts Secondary School where I got most of my training uh, in dance and all very different styles of dance from classical ballet, contemporary dance to jazz and then I went on to the Australian Ballet School in Melbourne so I had a very formal training uh, traditionally and then 
gosh, way back when. Um, I think it was in uh, 19, oh gosh, 24 years ago, let's say. Uh, I was living and working in South Africa and I was involved in a car crash that left me using a wheelchair um, and paralyzed uh, from the neck down. And um, that really changed my trajectory as, as a dancer and as a choreographer. Uh, I'd always, through my training, choreographed. I uh, didn't really know what I was doing. I think I was, back then, I was, I guess, being a bit bossy and wanting people to, like, learn my dance routines in my, in my front yard of my house and, uh, and, and just teaching people dances all the time. Uh, but then I learned that, that was choreography. And then through, through my career, I've been very um, grateful for the opportunities to also choreograph alongside the dance training. Um, so I did go through that change of transition uh, of, of going from a non-disabled uh, dancer choreographer to then acquiring my disability and then learning um, and rediscovering new possibilities as a disabled dancer. And for me, that was a real shift in, in not just my, my physical abilities and my physical um, possibilities, but also in my thinking around what dance meant to me. Um, as I mentioned, I did have a very traditional training, which was, you know, very elitist, very much like a trying to strive to have that perfect body of beautiful feet, long legs, turn out, high extensions. And I didn't have that anymore. So for me, dance changed. And it was about expressing myself through movement and, and through my, my body now and the way that I move. And, and one asset for me was no one's moving the way that I'm moving. And it's different and it's unique. And it has new interesting possibilities as, as a mover. So I very much came in it, into it as a, as a choreographer with a sort of artist head of looking at, okay, this is a new challenge. Um, how can I make the most of this? How can I use this in my art of dance and create new possibilities as a, as a dancer and, and as a choreographer? Um, there wasn't, unfortunately, a lot of opportunities in Australia at the time. Uh, so I then looked elsewhere to try to find some windows that are open uh, to, to fly into, really. So I ended up working in New York uh, for a few years uh, with an artist named Kitty Lum and her company, Infinity Dance Theatre, and, and also in London with Can Do Go Dance Company, which basically, um, yeah, so kickstarted my career again in a sort of an international circuit. So I danced with Kenduko for five years. And then after that, I then went freelance to produce, to produce and create my own work as a choreographer with my own company, Mark Brew Company. And since then, uh, I have just been making work. Uh, I love collaboration. So collaborating with other artists um, from around the world and yeah, working in the field of of integrated dance, of working with artists with and without disabilities to create my own work that I want to make as an artist. So I feel very humble and grateful that I've managed to continue my career and also survive as a living and working artist, which is particularly hard in these times. Could we have an interpreter spot, please? Thank you. Thanks. Oh, all right. Next question. Hey, um, so you recently moved back to Scotland. Um, mm. What prompted you to move back? Mm. Great question. Um, yeah, so my career did take me to uh, the US of A, to America. Um, the last five years, I was artistic director with Axis Dance Company, which is uh, one of America's leading uh, physically integrated dance companies, as they describe themselves. And that's based in Oakland in California, or in the Bay Area. And that was a wonderful learning and, and growing experience. Uh, but I was missing my, my role as an artist. I was missing the opportunities to create uh, and also for personal reasons, my partner uh, is based in Scotland. So uh, it just got to the point where it was time for me to 
focused my career back on the work that I wanted to make as an artist and also personally to be with my partner. So uh, for the time being, we're back in Scotland and this is sort of my base, uh, but a lot of my work is international. Um, so I'm not home that often, but when I am, it's a great place to be. And I love the people here and it's a place where I feel grounded and when I where I can sort of relax and um, and find space and re-energize for, for traveling again to wherever work and destinations take me. And what kind of work are you making at the moment? I'm glad you asked that question. So I've just returned uh, from Dublin uh, where I've had the last nine days doing creative development for a new work. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, it's going to be my first ever work for children. So it's aimed for children between four and eight year olds. And uh, I'm working with a wonderful cast um, of disabled and non-disabled performers with the wonderful support uh, of The Arc, which is a, a venue and uh, uh facility that uh, promotes and showcases work for children. And it's really amazing. It's right in the center of, of Dublin. And the work that I'm making is commissioned by the ARC Dublin Dance Festival and Arts and Disability Ireland. So it's a wonderful collaboration between these three organizations. And I'm very grateful that I was selected to make this work, uh, which is called The Race. So it will premiere next year at Dublin Dance Festival in May. And uh, the concept uh, behind the work is looking at three of Aesop's fables, so three stories uh, that entwine, uh, looking at uh, the tortoise and the hare that sort of starts off the race and, and then it goes into the ants and the grasshopper and the lion and the mouse and culminates with, with the coming together of the race where there is no winner, but it's about the journey as they went there. And we we're working with visual projections, puppets, uh, also including accessibility into the work, which of course is really important. And uh, yeah, and, and going into it with the mind of, of children. And one of the wonderful things the ARC have is they have a children's council. So they're able to come and see parts of the work, parts of development and give me their honest feedback, which is really brilliant. And, um, That's what I'm working on at the moment. Great, yeah. Um, and you've also been working on a project um, with Labi, City Labi. Mm. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, back being a freelancer, I'm sure a lot of artists know that you've often got, you know, fingers in different pies, so multiple projects sort of brewing, if I may say, um, as other projects uh, develop at different stages. Uh, but last year, I started uh, having conversations with Sid Labi uh, around a collaboration, because as I said, that's uh, at the heart of the work that I love to do is collaborating with new artists. And we didn't really know where it was going to lead, but we started off obviously through Zoom because of COVID, just having conversations about our life stories, the way that they are sometimes entwined, our similarities, our differences. And he began to ask me questions about uh, the car crash and that time in my life where everything changed in a matter of seconds. And it then drew us into looking at accident about what that word means, change, um, chance. And we then had the opportunity uh, through a collaboration uh, uh, with uh, two organizations in Germany to have a residency at Darmstadt Theater and uh, and also working with Monstrum uh, in Frankfurt as well. And we had two weeks to come together and it was Larby and myself and the rehearsal director, uh, Kevin Vivers. And we started to explore storytelling. And as we went through the work, it started to focus more on, on my story and that moment um, of the car crash, which we went, I went into that collaboration not thinking that that was going to be the piece that we we're going to make um, or explore, but it just organically led that way. And the way that Labi was working with me, it was really wonderful for me to be, be the artist and, and working with him 
on looking at ways of, of storytelling through movement, through language. Um, and we, he, he would interview me and I would just be talking and I didn't realize at the time that he was also recording me. And then, and then he'd send me the video of it and say, okay, you now need to learn that, which sounds like it could be pretty easy, but actually it was extremely hard and I never worked in that way before. So I had to relearn almost like as the third person, myself telling the story with the way that I said it with my arms and R's and my ah, sound effects that I would make and my gestures. So it was a, it was a real brain, a brain workout. And then when we had the residency, we were able actually to work with the car in the studio. So a real car that we were moving around. And for me as a disabled performer, I really love how I can work with different objects and, and different um, environments. So that was really fascinating to explore what we could do and also how we told the narrative of, of some of the moments um, that I was interviewed around and, and how it came in. So it's early days. Um, we're hoping that the work will premiere in 2024. That's sort of what we're aiming towards, uh, but that's very much a new collaboration that we're both excited about and uh, looking forward to develop a bit more, more of that as, the, as uh, this year and also next year. Um, so that's pretty exciting. That's a, it's going to be a solo work. Um, my last solo work that I made was um, back in 2015, it premiered, for now I am. Uh, so once again, it's a, you know, an important piece and a part of my journey that I'll um, hopefully be able to share on the stage. And uh, we've also spoken about making into a film as well. So it sort of has two strands, a live production and also a film. So watch this space. <laughs> Mm, sounds very exciting. Oh, I was just curious, Mark, about how your choreography has shifted over the years. You know, can you see kind of mm. an arc or, um, uh, you know, sort of, or, or, or where where do you think it's heading? I'm just kind of curious in your, on your choreograph choreographic trajectory. That was hard to get out. Yeah. Mm. Nice big words there. Um, I'm not going to try to repeat that. But uh, yeah, I mean, as, as we go through life, we evolve as, as humans, as people, and life experiences affect us. And, and I think through my practice, as, as well as a choreographer, as a creator, I'm always looking for, for new challenges. I don't, I, you know, whenever I start a new project, I, I often am working with new collaborators. Um, and that really sparks... Uh, interesting conversations and and obviously leads to places that I wouldn't expect. Often I go in with an idea and a concept, as I mentioned, for the children's work, but it's not really until I until I w work and develop the idea with other people that um, it sort of evolves in in sort of unexpected ways or or develops deeper into a process. Uh, I also, you know, enjoy working with different dance artists and. Often when I give a task or an exercise or choreographic material, it's always up to how they devise or how they develop it as well. So I feel I come in with trying to challenge myself and, and to challenge the artists I'm working with, but then in return, I get so much from the artists and the collaborators I work with and, and how they could question or how they interpret. So I feel like the work does organically grow and develop. Uh, maybe my focus, changes in regards to what is interesting to me at this time. Uh, as an example, working with this new work for children, it's definitely made me think about, obviously I'm not making this work for a contemporary dance scene. So I have to sort of put my, my sort of ideas and thinking around how this would work for children, how this reads, uh, would this, you know, appeal to an audience? So I am really thinking about that audience. Uh, and, and that's why the Children's Council is, is so great to be able to sort of share and feedback. And through my work, I often would bring in uh, people to, to support the work or, or look at work with the dramaturg as well to look at how the narrative is developing. Um, and I think having those voices in the process is, is really important to me. So I feel in answering your question, surely, I feel like my work has evolved and I guess matured uh, through through the years, 
but that's also relying on what my focus and interests are. Uh, but I do specifically do try to go into a new project or a new creative development um, with a fresh new book, with a fresh new pages of unwritten words and language and movement to, to see what could happen next. And have your processes um, changed in recent years? I mean, in, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I think as we go, well, um, my experience often, you know, I have developed, I guess, my little tool belt of, of things that I know that will work as a choreographer. So, uh, you know, different task or an exercise or um, movement. I know or I have an idea about the type of movement that that may create or how people would interpret that. So sometimes I do use some of those tools, uh, especially when I'm getting to know a new group. Uh, when I am asked to do a commission for a, a new company or a new group of artists, often sometimes they have not had the opportunity of working together. Sometimes they have, but I have not had that opportunity to work with them. So it's really important that I can build a vocabulary of understanding of, of what I'm meaning when I'm saying a certain word. So looking at my language and, and what, how, how dancers will interpret that. For an example, I may say the word uh, shunt uh, or shift or chug and just looking at how they interpret that word in their body and the sort of movement that I'm looking for. And often when I go to different countries, I have to find a different word or a different sound to get that quality of movement I'm looking for. So that sort of affects the, the learning and development of sort of building trust with the group of artists I'm working with, building a, a mutual understanding and respect of, of working together. We can Have swap you... interpreters just before the next question. Thank you. Sure. And yeah, feel free to jump in Rodney and Lucy. <laughs> Wow, Mark. <clears throat> wow. Hey, then that's me. What I'm uh, interested in. Is that okay, Suzanne? I jump in? Babe? Yeah, absolutely. Hey. The, Mark. Is the interpreter swapped over? Yeah. Mark, hey, Fakahukia Kite Papaka Nui Maui. What does it mean for you to return home? And does, is that a place of rejuvenation or is it a memory mm -hmm. or something that um, enhances you or something that, that uh, oh, I'd just like to know. Mark. Yeah, beautiful question, Rodney. Um, the last work I made for Access Dance Company where I got to meet you, Rodney Bell, and had the pleasure of creating with you in the years past um, was a piece, uh, yeah, last year, it could, Roots Above Ground. And it was a piece I made that was very close to my heart where I was really questioning where, where do I want to lay down my roots? Where are my roots? Where do I belong? And, and I was asking that question to the artists and the dancers I was working with, you know, what is home? What does that mean to you? That's it. What is belonging? Where do we belong? And, uh, and for me, going home, you know, for me is, being with family, being with the ones that I love, you know, unconditionally and that love me unconditionally. And, you know, all my family are back in Australia and I've not been back home for three years now due to COVID. Uh, but I am really, really, really excited that I will be back in, in the end of November uh, for a bit of December. So that'll be the first time I've been back in three years. And, and yeah, home means a lot to me and, and family. And it is a place where I feel... I'm, I'm grounded and I can be, and I rejuvenate my soul and my spirit and, and being with family, um, especially um, as a, as a world traveler who, someone who travels around the world for work, uh, I do often miss that, um, that it's not so easy to get home, obviously Australia and New Zealand are so far away. Uh, so it's a, it's a long plane trip and uh, yeah. and as a person as you know with, with somebody with a disability it's not always the easiest to travel either um, so I'm looking forward to coming home and and being energized and and being with loved ones again hey Mark I have another question for you because you know the mask warriors that sit at the background 
and make us look good. What's the intention of you to enhance the people like the stage crew, all those worries that hide in the shadows, Mark? What do they mean to you? Um, they mean they mean everything to me. I mean, without the team, you know, that I'm working with behind the scenes, in front of the scenes, uh, none of my work, the work I'm making, would not would not be a, would not be there, would not be present, would not happen. Uh, so I'm always very grateful and um, for how the team works together and and how we build how we build a work. And it is, you know, from planting that seed at the beginning with people and. You know, often as an artist, it's a scary thing because I, I don't know often what the outcome exactly is going to be. I have an idea, uh, uh, a concept that I'm wanting to create. Often I work in images. So I have these particular slides, slideshow images of things I want to create during the making. Uh, but to know what that finished product is, uh, is unknown. And it's scary to sort of put yourself out there and go, I don't know exactly what this is going to be, but by working with you all, we can realize what that would be. And yeah. You know, with the support team that I have and the artists I work with, it's really important that they also learn about, you know, disability, accessibility, and inclusion in in around the making of the work. So, it's a journey that we all go on together. Now, me, Mark, and I ask what I want to ask my one more question to you, my brother. What do you do to enhance your mind? What is um, what nutrition or what sort of focus do you take in to enhance your mind? to be present right here today. Ma. Yeah, I think for me, it's about, you know, well, as a, trying to find that balance and being in nature and having time away, uh, you know, meditating, doing things for me um, that I need. Um, I have animals, so <laughs> uh, being with my animals, I have uh, three dogs at home and I think, that just helps to ground me and and yeah being in nature um having space and time away from the noise you know especially in the the world of the internet and yeah. social media there's always so much going on so i need to switch that off and and then go more internal and and have time and space for me and often people see me as as an extrovert as someone who is always outgoing because uh, often I have to be with the work that I do, but I'm actually an introvert and I actually enjoy my alone time. And and I think I need that because I need to re-energize myself because it is a lot to always be that one that is making other people feel comfortable to be around you or to ensure and to lead a project or to work with artists, holding that space for others. It can be exhausting. So I don't need to like, you know, get my duvet, get my... Um, blanky and and get comfortable and just have some time out on my own with nature and with my animals. <laughs> well, thank you, Nami. I'd like to bow my head and thank you for full of words. Hey, I'm going to be uh -oh. disappointed at the time, my friend. But never, I'm Rodney, never. I am honoured to know you, Mark Bruce. And thank you uh -oh. so much for sharing the spiritual wear with us as an ADP. Thank you, Mark. Maybe we'll share. Yeah, no, thank you, Rodney. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. I think, no, thank you, Rodney. And I think, you know, like all the artists I've had to work with, I mean, that's one of the things I love the most about collaboration around working internationally with other artists is the is the beautiful richness of the different people I get to work with, like yourself, like Suzanne, um, and other people in, in different companies or independent artists. You know, I learned so much from others and I take a bit of each of you with me as I go on through through my journey. So that's really, you know, inspired, I hate to use that word, but really fed my soul, let's say, uh, in regards to creative possibilities and and nurtured me as, as a maker. So I thank you all for being a part of that journey with me. Then I'll quit. We're going to bring you here, Mark. So pack your bags. <laughs> pack your bags. Pack your bags. Hello, Lucy. Thanks for being here. Your accident has a change to your life as a person in a wheelchair.
Mm, has it changed you as a person, as somebody who's using a chair from the car crash? I believe that's the question. Um, I'm still, I'm still Mark. I think <laughs> I will say I, I never used to be so patient and now I've definitely learned to have more patience. <laughs> uh so going through that that experience of you know as you you know waiting in hospital waiting for someone to uh come and 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 you know in the beginning not being so fast you had to maneuver in my chair yeah. uh, I think it's, it's it's definitely helped me grow as as a as a person as a human um in regards to patience um learning how to try to be clear in, in what I'm wanting and, and what I'm describing. And, you know, I, as, a, as a choreographer, when, um, as a non-disabled artist, I used to just get up and show the moves and, and go, everyone, okay, dance like me, move like me. And, and then as a dancer using a chair, I wasn't able to do that. So I had to then develop my skills around communication and how, how do I get that idea out of my head at that amazing lift, turn, jump through the air that I imagine is going to happen to people who move differently to me and I'm not able to get up and demonstrate and show that. So I've really developed a way of using words, using sounds, using language, demonstrating with my upper body, as well as images uh, of you know, say for instance, like as if you know, I want this feeling of swing, as if you're swinging on a swing that then flies off into the water. Uh, so really trying to use imagery as well to give quality of, of movement. So I've really learned through these years, uh, through having a disability around how I communicate, engage and get my ideas out. And often that amazing idea and lift, jump, turn, fly through the air that I imagined, it doesn't really happen like I imagined, <laughs> which, which, uh, which can be frustrating. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. But also, but also, you know, by, by working that idea with others, I always ask my dancers and artists I work with, I just need you to keep open and open mind, open spirit, open heart to try, obviously in a safe and, and brave environment to work within, but let's try this idea. Mm. Uh, and often, and then it may not get to where I imagined, but you know what? It went somewhere even better than I imagined. And then I'm like, yes, let's lock that in. Let's lock in that <laughs> new way of dark fly soaring through the air. So yeah, once again, it goes back to that that unexpected uh, uh, how things can unexpectedly happen that I didn't didn't plan. I imagined to go one way, and boom, it went this other direction. But in a more better and interesting way. Yeah. So, so yeah, I think, um, at least I think my accident has affected me personally, you know, and, and as, as a person, uh, mm. but for the better in mm. a lot of ways. What is your thoughts about leadership disability in the arts? Hmm. I think it's extremely important and needed. Uh, from, you know, as I said, this, this October, I think is going to be 25 years since my car crash. When I acquired my disability, there wasn't really anybody out there for me to look up to. There was no role models. There was no other dancers with disability that I knew of. Um, I then learned about some companies such as Axis and I learned about Kanduko. But being in Australia, that was so far and so distant for me. Uh, I didn't have anyone there, which is why I then had to travel. So through my work, um, I do a lot of uh, mentoring uh, and also um, obviously I've, I've been in the position of uh, artistic director and in that role of, of leadership as a disabled artist. And I think it's extremely important and needed and uh, it helps to grow uh, the art form and the next generation yeah. can have other people to look up to and, and other people for support. Mm -hmm. And I think more of it needs to happen still. I mean, it's, great that Touch Compass has, you know, has really looked at what is our, our leadership look like, and it may look different than traditional ways of leadership. And that's really exciting because who says it has to be a certain way or just one person leading? Um, so I'm really excited about what people with disabilities are bringing to leadership and to look at looking at how it can challenge existing um, structures, hierarchy and structures to break that down to 
to look at new ways and new ways of leadership and more healthier ways and caring ways of leading because yeah. it's 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 having disability at, at the focus and not as an afterthought. Yeah. <laughs> so Mark, what have been uh, some of your career highlights? Yeah. Oh, well, working with Touch Compass and working with you all, definitely. Uh, yeah. Being in New Zealand, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, I definitely would like to come back, just putting it out there. Um, oh, also, yeah, I think working in Brazil was a, was an amazing highlight. I got to work with uh, two amazing artists, uh, Natalia Malo and uh, Giselle Calazans on a, a new work that we made. It was between Scotland and, and Brazil, and we ended up making a duet together. And we spent time here in Scotland. We spent time in uh, Rio de Janeiro and also into Sao Paulo. And they, oh, I just love it. I just love the international collaboration. Uh, learning about each other, the cultural differences, and and the richness that that brings to the process of what we're going to make. Uh, I really, really, that's been an amazing highlight as well. And I think, you know, the other thing is, I think, as I mentioned before, and it's more so now as, as I'm moving on through my life, uh, I never often look back. I always look forward, what's next? What's the next project? What do I want to do next? But actually now having, you know, that space and time now, I really valued the connections I've made with people. You know, even going into a room, teaching a workshop, uh, working with people who didn't know it was possible to dance as somebody with a disability. And to have someone say, wow, I can do that. I can be a dancer. I can be a creator. I can be a choreographer. I can be an artist. I can be a artistic director. And for me, that's that's really, really, moving and um beautiful and it's it makes me realize how important it is what we do awesome we have a swap of interpreters oh, please swap interpreters yes <laughs> thank you mac it's all right thank you uh, oh i i was gonna are we good? Koinama, Koina. I, I was just going to mention in regards to highlights, um, if it's okay, if I just have another one. One, um, one that I also love is, is about bringing groups of people together that have not had the opportunity to work together. And I've, I've been working on a project in Oslo in, in, in Norway this year, and I'm going back in October. And this is a collaboration between uh, CODA, so Oslo uh, International Contemporary Dance Festival, uh, which is led by Sinan Nielsen, uh, who actually used to be the assistant director of uh, Kenduko Dance Company and the Nord Opera Ballet. So this is wow. a, a huge, wow. big organization. They have their own opera house, um, <laughs> working, with a contemporary dance, working with a contemporary dance festival, wanting wow. to do an integrated dance project for the first time. And I was very wow. honored that they asked me to create this work. So we auditioned uh, disabled and non-disabled dancers, and we have um, uh, four uh, four disabled dancers and five non-disabled dancers, uh, mm. and it's a collaboration between artists that have never never mm. had the opportunity to be in the dance studio together. And wow. you know, a lot of them are coming with different experiences, both mm. lived experiences and experiences as dancers. And I had the opportunity of uh, spending two weeks with them in the studio to sort of start developing ideas and making it work, which I have made. It's called Unbeknown, um, and it'll premiere on the 14th or 15th of October at the Opera House in the in one of their main stages. Uh, so that's going to be really, really exciting for that to happen. And, uh, and, you know, in some ways it's like Norway's, you know, just beginning with this type of work and showcasing work by disabled artists and showing diversity and difference on stage. So I'm really excited about that and that this is sort of planting the seed for change. Thank you. I honor you all too. In my darlings.
Suzanne, Lucy, you see anything else? You like mm -hmm. the karaoke guitar? I think we're, oh, I, I got the five minute call. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, no, I, I think we're all good. Yeah, um, yeah. We need to open it up now, Izzy. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Mark. Um, I'm jumping in because we've got so many questions coming through on the chat, oh, yeah. and I wanted to make sure oh, we had yeah. enough time to answer yeah. some of them. Mark Brunhouse. Hola, amigas. So the first question is actually four questions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's all around uh, uh, COVID in the last two years. So um, mm. you seem to be really busy this year with international commissions. Is this a typical year for you? Have projects cascaded upon you now that we're hopefully coming out of COVID? Were you mm. busy creating online over the last two years? And were you ever worried about your work over the last two years? Um, they are all great questions, and yes, all of those I've been affected by. Um, firstly, when COVID hit, I was in America as artistic director of Access Downs Company, so I had to navigate the company, as I'm sure uh, Touch Compass and other companies and organizations had to, to online. So our priority, both as a company and organization, uh, working with the board, was to keep everyone hired and to keep everyone active in the sense of creativity and, and opportunities so we started then moving um a lot of our work uh, i was developing my work roots above ground as i mentioned to rodney virtually with the dancers in their homes i was giving them tasks uh interesting enough looking at home and belonging and then they are in their homes because of covid you know to make this work uh and then also teaching classes to our, our community as well so we had to navigate and shift to online so we were able to keep uh, our work going. Uh, also at the end of um, 2021, that was sort of my uh, my tenure as, as artistic director coming to an end. So I was then nervous about, oh, you know, being in an organization, having that security for five years. Um, what was it going to be like for me to be freelance and independent artist again? So that was really scary. And also with COVID, not knowing whether opportunities would come up. And I was very happy that um, some opportunities did come up. And that was, the initially was starting virtually, like even the project I did with Labi was having having meetings over Zoom. And I was in my, my living room on the floor, exploring movement possibilities while he was in the Zoom, you know, giving me different tasks. And um, so I think it also enabled us as artists, which were really amazing, that we can do that is to be adaptable, to look at creative process, how we make work and how we can navigate that in a more virtual and, and digital world. So, you know, we were able to do that. And then my last day at Access was on the 3rd of December uh, in 2021. And then on the 6th of December, I was in Germany developing research and ideas for a new work with Lobby. So I was very fortunate that I went straight from putting up the hat of artistic director of access to putting on my new hat as Mark Brew again, uh, as an independent artist and was able to get straight into work straight away on an international stage. But, but that was also, you know, challenging because obviously there was always COVID protocols. Uh, so we were testing every day, all that we had to do to be able to fly. Flying was extremely difficult and expensive. And that's one of the reasons why I was never able to come home back to Australia during that time was because of the expense uh, that would have costed to get back to Australia. Um, so I was able to build um, some projects uh, locally and um, more around the UK and also through virtual opportunities too. Uh, but I am really happy that now it's back to being in person and um, and I've been able to develop projects and I I um I've had people coming to me wanting to work with me and and that that's really humbling to to have people um want to work with me and uh, to look at what I can can bring to the work and and bring to the artistic practice but I'm also now looking at what is the work that I want to make under the banner of Mark Brew Company so also looking at the work that I want to make rather than I've been doing since I left Access a lot of commissions uh, for other companies and other organizations and 
and working uh, with other artists, but also now looking at the work that I want to make as well. Brilliant, exciting. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and uh, follow up question, uh, it's timed perfectly. What is the work you want to be making? What is the future of mm. Mark Brew Company? Um, I'm really, yes, it, I'm really in this position now where um, I'm working with my producer, Susan Hay, and we, we got some funding through Creative Scotland, which is the funding body here uh, in Scotland, to really look at where where my brew company is going where is the work that i that i want to make so we're going through some strategic planning right at this moment uh which i'm sure touch compass has done too so um i do have some projects one of them of course is the the lobby project uh a new solo work that i'm going to be making uh we're also looking at some new um set specific work as well as some new outdoor work that i want to be making which i've made in the past and uh, and also other potential uh, collaborations with other artists um, as well around the world, and and also we're also talking about how I can now create opportunities to sort of share this this knowledge and these experiences that I've had and the practice that I've developed as a as a maker and and working inclusively. Uh, so we're looking now at how we can build sort of more engagement opportunities to engage with other disabled artists um to come together one of the things i was really proud of with working at access dance company was developing their first ever choreo lab for disabled choreographers which i'm really grateful is continuing on under the district of nadia dame um but working with disabled artists helping support them mentor them um is something that's really important to me so i'm looking for developing opportunities like that brilliant um Sorry, there's just so many questions. I'm choosing which one to go with yeah. next. Um, are you confident to go anywhere to teach and choreograph regardless of language and or cultural barriers? I wouldn't say I was confident. I would say that I'm game. I'm up for a challenge. Um, often, you know, there, there are specific things I need in regards to my own access needs. I'm an access writer. Um, so I can do the best I can do. Um, but I've been to lots of places where it hasn't been accessible and language is, is um, it, you know, English is not always, you know, the first language, but that excites me as well. Um, it's once again, going back to making sure that, that we have a, a team that are, that are willing to support and are all there to sort of explore and how we can support each other um, is what makes it important. But, um, you know, I've always been wanting you made me think about places I haven't been and you know I've always wanted to go to India and explore you know working in India and but I've also been nervous about you know the infrastructure in India and and so forth but I you know if an opportunity came up uh I think I would be excited to try brilliant um cool so I think we've got time for a few more questions uh I want to follow what? you Oh, go ahead, Rodney. Yeah. I want to follow you, Matt. Yeah. Um, so simple but big question here. What has been the most challenging project for you and why? Uh, <laughs> you know, there, there are always challenges in, in every project. Uh, um, and often there are problems that come up and what it, what I'm excited about is how we find those solutions and how we find those together. Um, but I would say one, one of the things that I have found challenging is I am talking about a piece that I made, uh, which I was very, very proud of, uh, called Brew Band, I toured in 2007, 16 and 17. Um, and I was bringing musicians um, and dancers together and that always, you know, really excites me about bringing people together that have not had the opportunity together. But it is also challenging to try to find and create a space that works for everybody. Um, and sometimes, you know, working in sort of a dancer's way does not work for, for somebody else or working in a more um, uh, linear or narrative way may not work for other people. So 
to answer that question, I would say it hasn't been a specific project, but I think when bringing people together, finding that balance and being able to create that environment that is supportive and brave, but also nurturing and, and enabling people to flourish. Um, as possible. And that can be hard to hold that space and create that space um, for everybody. Hmm. Mark, you know what I love, bro? You know what I love? Is right that we, we have this um, Aroa Mai, is he? But I was just going to jump in and I was just going to say, Mark, what I love is we have this um, idealism of evolution through our bodies every day as a disabled person. So we, evol we are evolving every day. We are not mm. depleting. Mm. We are evolving, adjusting, adapting in our bodies, you know. Maybe one day mm. we've got to transfer to the seat this way. Maybe the next day, you know, as we go on in our lives. Mm. And I just like mm. to ask my brother, like, um, mm. does that influence your choreography, like the way your body shifts to everyday life and, and the navigation of um, space and time? No, because we always have to look down when we're in our chairs. We're always constantly uh, being peripheral in our vision on life. We're always peripheral. Mm. We're always like, there's not a single day that we can't roll down. Like for me, there's not a single day I can't roll down the ramp without looking down. Like navigating now, I've got mm. limestones over there. So I've got to navigate that before I get to share the air with my mum. Mm -hmm. So I'm just asking, Mark, is, are those things sort of like in the mix of this uh, dynamic dance that you create? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's really important, Roddy, and it is. It's very true. We we evolve. We're we're continually evolving. You know, uh, as people, as humans, as somebody with a disability, every day, you know we wake up and every day life is different and our body is different every day, uh, how we're feeling that day. And I really try to bring, you know, my practice now um, is is coming from a place of care, of, of being, you know, I always check in with everyone every day um, as we get into the studio, where, where are our body, mind and spirit today? Um, are there any need to know that we need to be able to know to be able to work with you today? So creating that space for people to check in and to share where they're at you know, in in their evolution of their their body, mind, and spirit of that day, and are there any need to know that we need to know to be able to work with you, and and then to have that knowledge to be able to be care to show care and then be patient and support each other through the day, and then also to check out the end of the day uh, with where people are at. Uh, there, what are the highlights from that day? What are the things we're going to take about? What are any questions that we have? And that's really helped to evolve my practice and my way of hopefully creating space and, and care for people working together. I always remember what you said to me, Mark. You say, you got to take care of yourself, really, bro. Do your stretches in the morning. And I, hey. I do them, Mark. I have a certain stretch routine now that I have to do. Good. If I don't do that, Mark, and I jump on my chair, oh, it's chaos. Yeah. But I do them when I think about you, Mark. So I hope you think it. Because you told me. That is so sweet, Ronnie. Yeah. Do the stretches in the morning. You got to do what you got to do. So thank you, Mark. Yeah. What do I need? Oh. What do I need, Mark? And Rodney Bell, I'm still doing my stretches every morning, too. <laughs> so I'm with you. <laughs> hey, sometimes it's hard, but you know what? When I do them, Mark, um, it's a better day. I tell you that, Mark. Yeah. It's a beautiful day. Yeah. A beautiful day. Definitely. Thank you, Mark. Definitely. Awesome. Oh, thank you, guys. Suzanne. So we've, oh, sorry, Izzy. Sorry. Oh, I was just going to jump in and say we've got we've got time for one more question from uh, the chat. But before that one, I just want to check in, Lucy and Suzanne. Do you have anything else uh, you had for Mark before we end with our final question? I'd just like to say one thing, Izzy. Bakatua na tomana Mark. Uh, 
Inga waka tō, my friend. Ma, thank you for being a seedling of Australia to oh. triple out over here and bless us with all good things, my friend. I will never forget. Oh. Thank you, Mark. Love me. Oh, thank you, Rodney. So, Mark, final question. It's popped up in the chat now a few times. Uh, so I'll, I'll, oh. I'll phrase all these questions into one just to make it easy. Um, what will it take to get you to come to New Zealand sometime soon? Oh, uh, uh, money. Uh, <laughs> money. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, uh, yeah, I'd be back in New Zealand in a flash. I, I yeah, uh, the times I've worked with Touch Compass, and every time yeah. I've been there actually has been has been with Touch Compass. Um, so as I mentioned, Touch Compass has a has a big place in my heart uh, working in New Zealand. Uh, and, you know, when I have been there, I've also been able to like hire a car and drive around to the beautiful countryside. And um, I do look forward to coming back and exploring more. And um, I think we just need, yeah, an invitation, an invitation and, uh, um, and the financial support to be able to support that invitation. Um, but, uh, I would be eager and willing uh, without holding back to be there in a flash. Well, good to know. Uh, we will keep that very close to our hearts as we uh, plan our, our next few years. Um, well, thank you so much, Mark, for, for your conversation. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you, Rodney. Thank you, Lucy. Um, thank you, everyone who tuned in tonight to watch. I know it's uh, late on a Tuesday night or early on a Tuesday morning for you, Mark. Um, yeah. We will be posting the recording of this webinar um, online. It usually takes us about a week to, to go through and make sure we've got all our captions right, um, but it will be posted with full uh, English captioning and, and everything else you've seen here today. Um, if you want to know more about Touch Compass, you can always email me at producer at touchcompass.org.nz, or you can just check out our website, which is www.touchcompass.org.nz. Um, and yeah, we'll see you all next time, we hope, for our next conversation on, oh gosh, I hope this is right, but I'm pretty sure October 3rd with uh, Dan Dore, another uh, oh. countryman of Mark. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. And um, uh, yeah, so uh, thank you. And if you have any final uh, words of wisdom to share, please, please do before we pass it over to John for our closing karakia. Yeah, gratitude and gratitude. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Lovely to, see you. Lovely to see you. Thank you, Susie. Ke ka, Mark. A kia ora tātou, John Tamiri Kemi Zaho. I forgot to turn my mic on. <laughs> it's like, it's like, are you on, you're on mute, you're on mute, you're on mute is like the language of the last three years, isn't it, Mark? Indeed. Yeah. I look um Namihinu Kiakwe, Motoko Papa Tinewa. Um thanks so much for all your energy in supporting uh this purpose of this time. Um Tinarawa to Kwe for your korero, your fakaro, your words, your thoughts, your conversation. Um, as my uh, learned colleague uh Rodney Bell would say, gratitude is the attitude, and our attitude is full of gratitude for what you've given us um today. Again, just stunning and, and lovely, open-hearted, frank sharing, just awesome. Um, I'll close this out with a, a traditional karakia. Uh, I think it's appropriate. Kia whakaria te tapu, kia wātea ai te ara, kia tūriki whakata'a ai, kia tūriki whakata'a ai, haumie, huie, taikie. A translation for you, uh, restrictions are cast aside. The path is now clear for us to return to our everyday lives. Um, richer for this conversation, uh, allied together in thoughts and hearts and as one. And as a final comment, I would just add, let's keep the corridor alive, eh? About getting you here for a workshop <laughs> sometime in the, next, in the next year to two years. I think it would be fabulous to, um, to reinvigorate as, as you did once before with the, the wonderful run resource program. Mm -hmm. I, know our, uh, I know our education team are hungry to develop new resources and um, and it would be stunning to have you here. I think I'd, I'd speak on behalf of everyone like that without uh, without too much concern. All right. But again, um, 
Na mihi nui, eh? Motu tātoko ki te kōpapa e tini wā. Thank you so much for your support of uh, of this time. Our International Creative Leadership Series is really all about bringing the great minds from around the world to little old Aotearoa. And thank you so much for for playing your part again and sharing your your heart, your thoughts, and um, and just yeah. wonderful gems of information. Kia ora. Mm. Right. Love you, ma. Love you, ma. Right. I'll see you in the Māori minute. Everybody. I'll see you in the Māori minute, ma. Mm -hmm. Be in touch. Mutu, thank you, everyone. Love to see you all. Thank you for the invitation. I appreciate it. Thank you. And good night, everyone. Mm -hmm. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.